We are an endangered species, you and I. We, lovers of speed. We, devotees of power, performance and noise. Go away, we are told, and take your carbon fibre and your fire-spitting V12s with you. There's hardly a place for us out here anymore. Not amongst all the commuters and congestion. I tell you what, I'm not a, um, a big Jeremy Clarkson fan, but he does make a, um, a compelling argument there somewhat, doesn't he? Um, he's introing the uh, new trailer for um, Forza 4, new game coming out on the Xbox 360. Um, the trailer's called Endangered Species. You can check out the full length uh, video on YouTube. It's, um, it's quite lengthy, but quite cool. Um, I was a huge fan of Forza 3, and I was thinking, well, Forza 4, you know, um, I mean, what can you do? Forza 3 was such a good game. How the heck can you improve on perfection, really? Well, um, the guys uh, from Turn 10 who uh, developed the game have um, certainly given it a, um, a good crack. And to talk with me about it is the Turn 10 content director, John Wendell, joining me from Seattle today. Hello to you, John. Hi. Hi, nice to have you on the, on the show. Um, yeah, I mean, I was thinking Forza 3, loved that game, so good. I mean, the graphics were fantastic, all the cars in there, everything looked great. They handled, as you'd expect, um, you know, the real car possibly to do. You know, I was thinking, well, where could you take Forza 4? Um, you guys set yourself the challenge. I mean, where, where do you even start after a game like that? I mean, how do you guys even begin to make a new game? Well, believe it or not, we have a high-level vision that you know spans you know the past ten years and the next ten years. We're always thinking about the franchise all up and how do we infect players with the passion for cars that we share. And really, it's born out of kind of a, a love for cars and a respect and love for car culture and gaming culture. So we see each version of the franchise more as kind of a release towards that continuum. So we're not completely starting from scratch every time we kick off a new version of the franchise. We're already kind of picking up and thinking about what are bigger grand ideas um, that we've e either partially realized or haven't quite yet realized, uh, either due to timing um, or technical reasons or you know other things that need to come about. Um, but we see it more as a continuum trying to eventually turn into uh, an automotive brand that brings people together around their love for cars as much as they do in the uh, real world and in we many will different ways, whether it's... Go ahead. I was going to say, we will talk about that, bringing people together, because there's a huge community component to to the new game. But t t tell us about the team. How big is the team at um, Turn 10 there, behind Forza 4? It's a massive effort. Uh, we have about 70 full-time employees that work here in Redmond, and it, during our height of production, we'll have about another 100 contract staff on site here. But Forza is so big, we actually have to partner with companies all around the world, in Asia, Europe, North America, uh, to help us build the massive amount of content that go that goes into this game. So at our peak, we'll have close to 400 people working on this game at one time. Wow. Because, of course, you not only need um, the people who are able to code stuff and, and graphics and, and whatnot, but you, I guess you need the people who know about how cars handle, the statistics of these cars, and you know, what, what um, a certain amount of rubber on a tyre is going to do on a road, all that kind of stuff as well. It's amazing, yeah, we have researchers here. We actually have to go out and put our hands on each of these cars. So we have to determine the car list, the cars that we're going to build. We have to go out and actually find these cars. We put our hands on them. We laser scan them in many cases. We take a lot of photographs of them to get the visuals just right. And now for the Auto Vista mode in the game, we have to get a whole new level of reference, which includes animation of how the doors, the hoods, the roofs animate, the boot-up sequences of the car. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the audio as well. We strap each car down to a dynamometer and record its engine sound under load so that it gets a really accurate positive and negative load as the car runs through its gears and it sounds incredibly realistic. We take cars out to a skid pad, record their, their skids, what tires sound like at various limits of traction on asphalt. We've even gone and bought cars and took them down to the California Highway Institute and ran them on one of those test crash sleds and crashed them into walls so we got the audio of a car <laughs> crashing, crunching into guardrails and stone walls just right. Wow. Um, I mean, that, that must be the dream job for some of these people that do this kind of stuff, I could, I'd imagine. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I don't get to do too much of that anymore. Yeah. You know, I manage a lot of the team, but we send these guys out, and it's yeah, it's a, it's you know, people tell you what a rough job game development is, and we work long hours and things like that. But there's certainly some some fun perks to it too. Talking about damage, I mean, something I noticed from Forza Three is that okay, you can smack into a wall, but you're never totally going to wreck a car, are you? you know, and I was. I was wondering whether or not that has changed uh, with the new game. I, I've played it for a few days now, and I try not to crash as, you know, as much as I can. But I have noticed that there does seem to be a little bit more damage going on. Well, yeah, there's a couple things there. We uh, It all depends on how you have damage set in the game. Hmm. You can either have damage off, you can have cosmetic damage only, or you can have damage that also affects the physics to various levels. So for the hardcore racers, they can turn everything up to the point where you can damage the car to the extent that it's undrivable and you actually can't finish the race. You are rewarded for setting difficulty levels at that level, so if you're able to race at that level and be successful, you can progress through the game quicker. Uh, many people choose to just do cosmetic damage damage and they can crash the car as much as they want it will always drive okay but it'll look pretty wrecked and it, it you know it's always a balancing act between trying to find the right amount of fun and also partnering with manufacturers as you can imagine they're they're pretty sensitive to how we portray their cars and uh-huh. we're always here to try to push the limits you know in forza three we added rollover um, we've got you know more parts that fall off this time around we've really tweaked kind of how cars take damage. So when you scrape into a wall, you'll see kind of scrapes, but when you smash into something, you'll see it more kind of smashed, trying to make it a little bit more realistic, the kind of damage that the cars take uh, in the game when they hit each Mm. other. And we're always pushing the boundaries of manufacturers and trying to represent it realistically. Mm. Um, Huge developments um, between Forza 3 and Forza 4, including now the inclusion of Xbox Connect. Tell us how that is now in the game. Well, when we first saw the Kinect sensor, back then it didn't look like it does now. It looked like kind of um, some prototype hardware, as you can imagine, was kind of held together with duct tape, had this kind of crazy red eye on it, and it was a little scary looking. Um, But we immediately saw potential in this thing. We're like, wait a second, we've been trying with Forza. With Forza 3, we added new assist to try to help younger kids and older people like my dad be able to come in and play who didn't grow up with a controller in his hand mm. you know we get frustrated playing the game so we saw this as a great way to now connect to a larger part of car, car culture people who aren't necessarily hardcore gamers and don't aren't intuitively skillful with a controller to come in and now express and experience their car passion in our game without a controller and that's kind of how the auto vista experience was born it was started there and uh a way to just naturally walk up and look at a car, look at it up close. It required that we, we created a whole new asset. You know, the, the cars in Auto Vista are, are uh, approaching a million polygons to incredible level of detail. So you can stoop down, zoom in, see these to a really high level of detail, and just interact with a car in a way that, honestly, most of us will never get a chance to do. I mean, who who has seen... Yeah. You know, one of the classic 50s Ferrari Testarossa TRs or something like that that auctions for $12 million. You get a chance to actually reach in and touch these and open them up, start them up, those kind of things, all with with full body control. But we also wanted to look at different ways that Connect could um, help players interact with our game. And some of them are are kind of geared towards more broad players, um, like hands-free driving. You can just jump in and now and actually drive a car and have fun. Like, if you want to sit down on the couch with your son and just drive and play, you can do it together, and it's really fun and casual. That's hands out in front of you stuff, isn't it? Like like you're holding a steering wheel, yeah. So that's the more gimmick. That's the more gimmicky end, though, isn't it? But there is actually some more serious, uh, for the hardcore gamer, connect action in there, isn't there? Exactly right. We, We came at it from both angles. We wanted to bring broad kind of control in that way, um, but we also wanted to have uh, something. Hardcore gamers and serious racers are never going to play with their hands up in the air. It's not as precise as playing with a wheel. Mm. But what we did do is we, we introduced Connect head tracking. Now, some games, and we've done it in the past before, is when you're playing with a controller or a wheel, you can look around in the cockpit using another thumbstick or something. But honestly, it's pretty awkward and difficult to do, and you end up not doing it very much. But now with Connect, you can play with a wheel or the controller, and with the Connect sensor, we'll track your head movements. So your head. What we found is when we watch people play, they naturally turn and look through the corner even before when it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Now the Connect sensor actually tracks your head, and it will look through, and it's very intuitive and natural. And we found actually when people think about it, it, it feels kind of weird, and it doesn't quite work the way they would expect. But when we tell them to look, just 
pretend that it's not there, just drive like you normally do, it works really intuitively and naturally, and you're able to just kind of look naturally to the apex of the corner and look yeah. where you want to go. It's, it's a pretty powerful feature for, for, for power core users, and we also added um, Connect Voice for UI hyperlinking. A game like Forza has a massive UI that oftentimes takes uh, several layers deep. If you're in four levels into the UI painting over here and you want to jump out to community or something like that, now you can just say Xbox community and your sensor will save whatever you're doing, back you back out to the menu, drill you down into the new area, and um, allow you to kind of navigate the UI that way. So, again, it's another power user trick for core players, hopefully, that will um, get some value out of the Kinect sensor. Yeah, and now and, and talk about actually sort of drilling down into the game. I mean, I've heard with previous incarnations of Forza that some people buy the game but don't actually even race. There's the hardcore races, but some people just go in there and paint cars and create artwork. Um, yeah. So that's still going to be a massive feature for Forza 4? Absolutely. I mean, we've improved now, like the livery editor, for example. Uh, most of it came out of our community. We we added a bunch of new shapes, and we be- basically went to the top painters in our community, and we said, look, what's holding you back in our livery editor? What would, I mean, they've done shocking paint jobs already, hmm. but what would allow you to do even more? And they submitted their kind of top suggestions, and we've incorporated those into the game. And we've also allowed you to take layer groups that you saved in Forza 3 and import those directly into Forza 4. So a lot of our great painters are going to be able to bring those right over, get a great head start, and now with the new shapes, be able to kind of paint even more impressive paint jobs. But just just like in real life, just like in real car culture, people come at cars from a lot of different angles. Some like to upgrade and tune them, some collect, some race, some paint. Uh, we want to provide um, many different ways for people to interact in our game with cars just like they do in the real world. And you're right, we do. There's one of the famous painters in our community, her gamer tag is Little Vixen, and it's a housewife in Arizona. <laughs> and she never drives, but yeah. she's one of our most famous community members, and she just paints and she puts stuff up on the storefront. She's got one of the most famous storefronts, and people buy her, her paint jobs. And, um, yeah, it's, and there's famous tuners. And now with a feature called Car Clubs, you can get together with your best friends and create a car club, and you have a shared garage within that. So you can find a great painter, a great tuner, a great driver, a great photographer, yeah. put them together in a car club, and you can all have the same paint jobs on your cars. And somebody can set up, okay, we're going to race at Silverstone this weekend, and we're doing this kind of car. The tuner can go through and do a tuning setup for that. And then you can put your best drivers in there and then have your best cinematographer come in and take a video of it afterwards and share it out. <laughs> That's so and, cool. And share all the cars in your garage. It's pretty cool. Just, just talking about that, um, uh, I um, uh, joined a club um, just the other day, and um, and Chris, uh, a guy called Chris Leggett, who's also in, in the club, he just tweeted me just then and said, oh, um, thanks for parking your DeLorean in the garage the other day. I took it out for a test drive. <laughs> so that's yeah. What it did. Um, and there's a, we won't give it away, but there's a, um, there's some good gamer points you can get off the uh, DeLorean if you get it up to a certain speed. Um, I think I just gave it away, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite fun. Um, now, is, is it all just for petrol heads or is there something for the environmentally conscious in there? Is there, is there a hybrid car hidden away? Well, we have we have introduced some electrics to the game, and of course, there's the diesels now in uh, ALMS racing as well, and and some some kind of uh, uh, hybrid electrics in there now as well. Um, again, people are coming at cars for a lot of different reasons, and yeah. the green movement is one of those, yeah. and trying to pull people in that way as well. Um, and there's this uh, relationship you guys now have with um, with Top Gear. So you've got Jeremy Clarkson. Um, explaining a lot of stuff in the game, you can also park your car in the um, in the Top Gear showroom, and um, also drive around their their test track. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, we've always had a huge kind of admiration and respect for Top Gear, uh, the show and the magazine and the brand. And they do a great job portraying cars. Um, so we wanted more than just a licensing deal. We didn't want to just license their content. We actually formed a true creative collaboration with them where myself and Dan Greenwald, the creative director, we spent time in the BBC studios over in the U.K. and met with Andy Willman, the executive producer, mm. and sat through scenarios and kind of brainstormed together. It's like, yeah, of course, we'll have the test track and we'll have um, uh, Jeremy Clarkson in there and things like that. But what else? 
what else? Like, you guys do stunts on the shows and things like that. What, what could you do with cars that's prohibitively expensive or difficult or dangerous in the real world? We're a virtual game. What could we do? And that's how things like Top Gear Soccer and Top Gear Bowling were born um, out of that kind of creative collaboration. And we found that when we look at how people have played Forza 3 online, it surprised us to learn that only about 50% of the people that play online are actually racing. Yeah. The other half of them are kind of playing viral games like uh, Virus and Tag and Cat and Mouse and things like that, and uh. just kind of having fun with cars. And putting that together, Top Gear is all about humor and, and mucking about with your mates as well, just over cars. And kind of putting those two together was very natural for us. So you see a lot of, a lot of interesting things kind of emerge from that creative partnership, and I think you're going to see more of that to come. I'm finally looking forward. I mean, I'm very aware that um, Forza 4 now has what, a, a sort of a two-year window of, of ongoing content and relationships and um, downloadable stuff, that, and people will be playing the game for a long, long time. But I'm just wondering, is this as far as you can go on the current um, generation of console, the Xbox 360? I mean, have you really pushed the technology inside that console to the limit? You always think you know where the limits are, just like with real racing, and then you discover new limits. Um, so when we shipped Forza 2 on the 360, you know, we thought we were pushing the limits pretty good, and then we set a new high ground two years later with Forza Motorsport 3 on the 360. This is our third time on the console, and you know, each, each version, I believe, the graphics have made a, a jump forward to the point where you would swear it's new hardware. I mean, you look at Auto Vista, and it's, nobody's not any just racing game, but nobody's putting that level of detail and kind of fidelity mm. into real-time rendering on a, on a game box. So um, is it the limit of what we can do today? It's pretty darn close. But um, mm. as we found, we've got really smart people here, and as we continue to optimize and find clever new ways to, to push and utilize the hardware that we have, um, it's, uh, we can always do great new things with it. As I think we're proving again here with Forza 4, which is uh, you know our third time on the console. Yeah, well, it's been really good to um, to chat about the game. I, I, I'm I'm loving it, and I um, I can't wait to uh, increase my driver level and skills. In fact, just before we go, um, have you? Is there any um, hard and fast tips for driving in Forza 4? I mean, if you're a good driver in the real world, or even a racing car driver, does it make you a good gameplay driver, and vice versa? We have found that it actually does. Um, we've had, you know, we have pro drivers consult on the game for everything from physics to the tracks to the sound uh, to a lot of different things. But, you know, we've had pro drivers like Gunnar Jeanette, Stefan Sarazin, um, Juan Pablo Montoya have played our game and given us feedback. One of the more interesting stories we have is uh, Petit Le Mans was just run last weekend, but the year prior... Uh, Stefan Sarzen was here visiting the studio, and uh, he was racing the Peugeot 908 for the Peugeot team at Petit Le Mans a week at Road Atlanta, mm. and we have the Peugeot 908 and, of course, Road Atlanta in our game, and he sat down on our on our simulator, hadn't really played a game a whole lot, and uh, immediately started turning fast laps on it in a very similar way as you would expect for somebody who's used to driving a million-dollar race car. And then that week later, he went and set pole at Petit Le Mans. It was within seven tenths of a second of his best time on our simulator. Wow! So it correlated very well one to one, and it was a pretty good proof point for uh, the accuracy of our physics and our environments and our cars. Excellent. Hey, uh, John, John Wendell, thanks so much for um, for joining us on the show, talking about Forza Four out 